Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamu alaikum my brothers and sisters I hope you're praying your salahs as well as looking to the Quran and Hadith for guidance in your everyday life If you're watching this video in its salah time please pause it and go pray and come back when you're done And salah segues us nicely into today's topic the so-called UK's strictest head teacher, Catherine Barbal Singh, who is in charge of a school with a 50% Muslim population, has decided to ban Islamic prayers and has been taken to the High Court by a female Muslim pupil for this. Muslim parents really need to boycott this school and schools like this. These people will teach children immoral and inappropriate intimacy education that is a government necessity, but ban praying in schools. Put your kids into Islamic schools or homeschool your children. There is no need to protect protest this unwarranted and ignorant prejudice and Muslims should absolutely never threaten or force anyone into changing their minds. With that said, I totally understand and support the legal action being taken against this head teacher. After all the bluster and excuses Catherine gave, this is definitely a disguised anti-Muslim move. It's either ignorance or just blatant disregard for a small request to practice one's religion privately. One of the excuses given is that members of other faiths will also need prayer rooms. An easy solution to this is to provide a gymnasium to be open with a supervised member of staff where all faiths are welcome. And with 350 out of 700 pupils being Muslim, the head teacher's unwillingness to budge shows how much she's committed to not accommodate Muslims and also shows the complete lack of diversity in the school's attitude when the biggest tenant in the Islamic faith is being so adamantly opposed. Unlike other faiths, Muslims have set prayer times for our five compulsory daily prayers. In all reality, during school hours only one or two of these prayers would occur which is a very small request that most credible establishments would grant. Colleges, universities and prisons all over the UK have interfaith prayer rooms. Why can't the school do so? Especially since they have such a high volume of Muslim pupils. It would just make sense that they would. I would somewhat see her point if the majority of the students were non-Muslims. People like Catherine would happily brainwash kids into learning about sodomy and cross-dressing but won't allow them to take part in their private religious practices. The craziest part is that the female Muslim child who brought about this legal action in order to exercise her religious rights actually prayed in the playground where it was initially permitted for kids to pray by the school but this was also soon banned on the grounds that too many Muslim pupils started to pray during Ramadan and were encouraging other more casual Muslims to pray also. As Muslims we regulate each other's faith as long as this is done in a friendly and caring manner it is a good thing. The very least the school could have done was allow children who want to pray to continue to do so in the playground. The school actually tried to keep their Muslim prejudice out of the media because it clearly looked like discrimination until a court ruled it could be reported on. Once again, Muslim parents need to pull their kids out of this school and need to look for Islamic alternatives to educate their children. Let's roll the clip. There was this legal action brought by a, a female Muslim pupil against a ban on prayer uh, at her school. You, you know, the, the country's strictest head teacher. We opened in 2014 uh, with 30% of, uh, of our population being Muslim. We have since grown that to 50% of our population being Muslim. What you know, is the is. reason why you wouldn't have a prayer room? First of all, the idea of one prayer room, there are 350 children who are Muslim. So yeah. clearly we would need several prayer rooms. And of course people can pray in their head, but we're really talking about prayer rituals here. And this wasn't really an issue at all. And then suddenly it changed. One girl decided yeah. she so, wanted to pray in the playground. Yes, we have always allowed prayer in the yard. So for people who say we don't like prayer, well, that's not true. We always said that it could happen in the yard. It just didn't happen for eight years. A whole campaign started online on social media uh, campaigning for a prayer room. Within the school, though, it was interesting because more and more children started praying over days. So the governors rightly took the decision, in my opinion, to uh, ban prayer rituals happening in the yard. We have been taken to court for us to have prayer rooms on the inside of the building, because I think it's recognized that it puts us in danger if we're outside the building. Yeah. And you know what, but if they, you think I really want a, a prayer room, well, there's lots of schools that provide But exactly, there are so many different uh, faith schools. I don't approve of faith schools anyway. I think all schools should be uh, mixed faith. In the last 10 years, 
things have changed quite radically in our schools. You can talk about critical race theory, you can talk about decolonization, you can talk about the trans issue, you can talk about adult authority having disappeared. Both families and schools shape our children. The GB News presenter is as ignorant as a plank of wood, which is evident through her past interviews with Muslim guests as well as her previous statements. So many anti-Muslim media outlets and content creators have been delighted by this small-minded position. The head teacher has a right-wing and interpretation of secularism. She doesn't seem to really believe in diversity for British Muslims. Her version of diversity is similar to the French, who force Muslims to sacrifice their religious identity in order to become more French, which has led to extreme tensions in their country. She doesn't seem to care what Muslim parents and kids think, and she doesn't seem interested in catering to their perfectly reasonable religious requirements. Like I said, a prayer room in the school gym could be arranged twice a day for 15 minutes at a time, where Muslim kids could sacrifice their break time to take part. This would not disrupt the ethos of the school at all. But Catherine just doesn't want to implement this and she has political views that oppose the Islamic way of life and she seems to pander to that type of audience. This makes her incompetent in her role as head teacher of a school that consists of a majority Muslim population of pupils. My brothers and sisters, there are plenty of high performing Muslim schools around the UK and this also applies to you if you live in another Western nation where there will be some really good Islamic schools close by. Our children's future is at stake. Let's not leave it in the hands of these idiots. Thank you for watching. Please check out the description section of this video to support the channel. Make sure to join my free telegram group via the link in the description where we as Muslims can speak freely and without censorship in order to guide and support each other in our deen. Or if you have more serious personal issues you need help with, please feel free to book a call with me. Please like, comment, share, subscribe and turn on notifications as I'll be posting new content daily. Jazakallah khair. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.